Can I get a witness? Hallelujah. This is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah. We give God praise. Hallelujah. The song says, welcome into this place. Welcome into this broken vessel. You desire to abide in the praises of your people. So we
Amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. Hallelujah. Lord, you are good. Amen. I said, Lord, you are good. Does anybody know that he is good? He is great. He is wonderful. Hallelujah. Come on, put your hands together and magnify the Lord. Hallelujah. All right, youth choir, y'all going to stand up and give us some good praise? Oh, yes, I know you're ready. The song says, Lord, you are good. Come on, put your hands together all over the building. That's it.
Can we all stand on our feet and just give God praise right now? Has God been good to anybody? I said, has God been good to anybody? I said, has God been good to anybody? Can we just give God a hand clap of praise right now? Amen. You may be seated. And as you're taking your seat, can you just find your three neighbors and say hello? Good to see you. I like that outfit. Can I borrow $10? I'll pay you back next year. What mom and them doing? Just say good morning, good to see you. I'm glad you sat by me. Because this is the praise section right here. Amen. Amen. You can keep shaking hands if you need to. Amen. Guess what, church? It's good to be in the house of the Lord. I said it's good to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. Amen. At this time, we'll have a welcome from a member of the youth ministry. Yes. Amen. All right, all right. Amen. Got these two junior deacons coming down. All right. Good morning. Will all visitors please stand? On behalf, on, be, on behalf of Pastor Gordon, First Lady Gordon, and St. John's family, I would like to welcome you to our worship service. I welcome you once, I welcome you twice, I welcome you three times in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Let's give it up for the youth ministry. Amen. Amen. These, these two young brothers are well-dressed, too. Amen. Nice suits on. All right. All right. It's good to be in the house of the Lord, church. It is good to be here. I've got quite a few announcements I want to get through, and so I just ask that you would bear with me. The first is, as always, you already know what I'm going to say. Let's keep one another in prayer. Let's keep one another in prayer. Sister Edith Fenderson is asking for prayer. Sister Edith Fenderson is asking for prayer. Uh, also, Deacon Glenn is asking for prayer. He is in the hospital this morning. So please keep Deacon Glenn and Deaconess Glenn uh, in your prayers this morning. Um, just this past week, uh, the Lord called home one of our dear members, Sister Pat McConico, has went from labor to reward. And the Lord has called her home. Her celebration of life will be this coming Tuesday here at St. John Missionary Baptist Church. 10 a.m. is the wake, and then 11 a.m. is the homegoing celebration. That is Sister Pat McConico. Amen. So we want to just continue to keep, just keep each other in prayer. You, all, you never know what people are going through on a daily basis. And I know that person sitting next to you look good this morning. I know they look real good. They probably smell good, too. You don't know what they went through this week just to be here in church. So let's pray for one another. Amen. Amen. I also want to um, highlight, you know, tomorrow is the Boston Marathon. Amen. I'm not in it this year, maybe next year, but Sister Maddie Deed, her daughter, will be running. Sister Natasha Washington, she will be running. And her mom is already excited. <laughs> Amen. Her daughter's going to do good because her mother is already running for her. We want to keep Sister Natasha Washington in prayer as she runs that long race tomorrow. And for all who are running, we know it was, what, maybe 11 or 12 years ago, 
that they had the bombing. Um, we want to just continue to keep all of those who are running in prayer. So thank you. And also just uh, for Sister Natasha Washington, keeping her lifted in prayer as well. I need running for who? For Black Girls Run. That's the organization she is running for. Amen. Black Girls Run. I have some save the dates. I need, I need you to put these, these dates in your notes. I need you to put these dates in your notes, please. Amen. Uh, I am calling a special call church meeting for Saturday, April the 27th at 10 a.m. Typically, our church meetings will be, would be on a Monday, uh, but this time we're going to have a Saturday church meeting. So I am calling a special call church meeting on Saturday, April the 27th, starting at 10 a.m. Saturday, April the 27th, starting at 10 a.m. for a special call church meeting. Uh, we should only be about an hour and a half. We're having this meeting in the morning so that you can go about the rest of your Saturday with errands or children or grandkids or whatever you have. Uh, this has been requested that we try a Saturday meeting, and so we're trying a Saturday meeting. Saturday, April the 27th, starting at 10 a.m., we're going to give Saturday a shot. So it will be a special call church meeting, okay? Now I'm going to say it one more time. Saturday, April the 27th, at 10 a.m., we will get started at 9.59. 9.58, we will get started. Amen. We have some business we do have to conduct for our church meeting. And this is a special call church meeting. So please mark that in your calendars. In addition, the Women's Auxiliary was having a program on that date. Uh, they are pushing that, their program back to a later date. And I will inform the church of when their program will be. Amen. We will uh, have in-person Bible study this Wednesday. We will have in-person Bible study this Wednesday, and Bible study will be led by Minister Somerville this coming Wednesday. So please be here uh, as he shares what is on his heart. And speaking of Minister Somerville, I want people to keep him in prayer because on this coming Saturday, April the 20th, he will be sitting before an ordination council by the UBC. Amen. We've, we've been on this journey about nine months or so, and he's had to write a paper, and he's had to have some meetings, and now we have a council together that he will sit before. And one of the things about these councils are even if they know you, that doesn't mean they're going to be nice to you. They might ask some hard questions, but, but this coming Saturday at 10 a.m., I want you to just be keeping him in prayer. And if the council finds it fitting to ordain him, uh, we will ordain him next month. So I'm already claiming it. He's already claiming it. And we'll just wait for Saturday. So Minister Somerville, we'll keep you in prayer. This has been a long time coming. We've had many bumps, some, some slowdowns, some traffic stops, but here we are. God's timing is perfect timing. God's timing is perfect timing. Amen. And also just continue to keep our church uh, anniversary committee in prayer. So Cynthia, I don't know if you had any updates or not. If We, we, Mike, right here. There's Mike right here. Even have to move. First of all, giving honor to God and thanking Him for another blessed day for each and every one of for breath of life that He gives us. And with that said, I just want to just throw out that date: September 10th and 11th, two day, two night revival. Uh, the 13th uh, Friday, the banquet. That Saturday, the 14th. Kelly Choir reunion and the finale with our Sunday service on September 15th. The tickets are up, or should I say, you do not have to wait to physically 
get a ticket in your hand. You want to attend that banquet. Oh, my hand's up. See me. We'll get you ready and signed up for that. If you want and need to ride to the banquet transportation, get yourself to the church. We'll make sure you have a nice, safe ride to and fro back here from that banquet. Night driving, not for all of us, not even for me. So again, your safety and just really just being a part of the whole anniversary period is what's important. And any questions, we're here, answer, make it easy. It's a non-event other than just giving God his glory for the 80th anniversary. Amen. And we thank you, each and every one of you. However, I do want to put one more plug. Please don't wait until August to even think about getting your ticket. All right. Do it in July. The reason being is we're only going to have 30 tables. That's only 300 people. And believe it or not, I'm just going to put a little buzz in your little thought process. We already have 100 people that is signing um, for a ticket. So technically, 200 seats are left. And this is our church. We want to make sure that none of you are not there. We want everyone to be there. And we give God his glory. And I thank you for taking the time to just listen to little old me praise my Heavenly Father. Love you all. Thank you very much. Amen. Keeping the anniversary committee in prayer with tonight revival. I will be sharing those revivalists real soon. Amen. Last year, over a year, I have been praying about who to invite to speak for our 80th church anniversary, and God has placed some individuals on my heart. So for our banquet, our banquet preacher is going to be, can I get a drum roll real quick? Pastor Clinton McFarlane from the Grace Baptist Church, who received his call to ministry while visiting this church that his father used to uh, give revivals at. Amen. And then our preacher for that Sunday morning will be none other than, can I get one more drum roll? Pastor Greg Fernandez will be back and he will be preaching for us on Sunday. And he is excited to come back. And it is my honor as his successor to bring back your predecessor to come preach. So Pastor Greg Fernandez will be our Sunday morning preacher for church anniversary. Amen. Church, it's time to give. It is time to give. Brother Gray has food outside. Brother O.B. Gray has food outside. Time to give, time to give. We got, we got Brother Archie Bruton, the trustee. And Brother Jackson, our walking deacon. Amen. We still wait on his album to come out. But as soon as he tells me the date, I'll let you all know. We've got Deacon Tab. Amen. Great man of God. We're going to stand on our feet if you can. Reverend Greg Morris is going to pray for our offering and our tithes and offering. And after he prays, you will be in the hands of the ushers. Good morning, church. He said tomorrow's the marathon, so they said Boston's strong, but I believe in giving God strong, amen? So how many of us know if we plant a strong seed, we get a strong reward, amen? Let's go to God in prayer. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for what you've given us to be able to give back to you. Thank you for touching the hearts of the believers and non-believers and let them know that you are God and God all by yourself. We ask you to keep a hedge of protection around this church. And as we get ready to walk into the future, Father, and celebrate in the 80 years that you've given this church, we give you praise, honor, and in advance. We thank you, Father, for those who have it to give and those who don't have it to give. 
let it be able to give in the next time that we meet not just tenfold to thirtyfold but a hundredfold and we claim it and we speak it into existence and we ask you father to humble us as we as only you know how as we give you the praise and the glory and this in your darling son Jesus' name we give you the praise honor and the glory amen
Good morning, St. John. How's everybody doing? The children have has chosen this song tomorrow. It was a song that they chose, and we've practiced so hard. And we are so honored to have our deacon Beard to accompany us this morning. So put your hands together, and let's get behind our young people. Thank you. 
Amari, come back, come back up here if you can. Just stand right here and face the congregation. And just bow, just bow. Give it up, give it up, give it up. Amen. Come on, church. Let's give God some glory. Now we need Amari's album, Deacon Beard's album, Brother Turtle's album, Phil's album. We, we got some work to do here at St. John. We got some albums to put out. Amen. Amen. I feel the Holy Spirit in here today. Amen. One more prayer request. I'm sorry. I forgot to mention uh, First Lady is going with a group of students high school students to uh, Atlanta, Georgia this week for HBCU tour. So keep her safe, traveling mercies, which also means keep me in prayer because I don't know what I'm going to do now for a whole week. So keep me lifted, all right? Church is preaching time. Hey Amen. I got about a 10-minute sermon today, I think. Ephesians. Ephesians, the fourth chapter. Ephesians, the fourth chapter. Ephesians, the fourth chapter. And I'm going to read verses one through seven. Ephesians, the fourth chapter. Verses one through seven. Ephesians, the fourth chapter. Verses one through seven. reading from the NIV version as always Ephesians the fourth chapter verses one through seven it reads like this it says as a prisoner for the Lord then I urge you my brothers and sisters to live a life worthy of the calling you have received be completely humble and gentle be patient bearing with one another in love make every effort to keep the unity of the spirit 
through the bond of peace. For there is one body and one spirit, just as you were called to one hope when you were called. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is over all and through all and in all. But to each one of us, grace has been given as Jesus Christ has apportioned it to us. Amen. 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 Beloved, this is our scripture text. And with your help and your prayers, I want to preach simply from this thought. I just want to be a good teammate. I just want to be a good teammate. You may be seated. Gracious and loving God, thank you. For this day and this opportunity, Lord, you have already blessed us in worship today. Holy Spirit, have your way. Lord God, hide the preacher behind the cross. Build him up, Lord. Give him the words to share. May you lift up all of us who have come today to hear a word from you. Bread of heaven, bread of heaven, feed us till we want no more. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Beloved, I remember how heartbroken I was when I watched the Super Bowl a few years ago when the New England Patriots played the Atlanta Falcons. I had always been a Falcons fan since I was a kid. But for some reason, we couldn't ever find a way to win. But in this particular game, my Falcons were winning. And were winning big. And it looked like the game was all over. Because in the fourth quarter, it was, the score was 28 to 3. And it's usually for any team at this moment where you begin to relax a bit because it looks like you have it won. But then something started happening on the field, but really something actually was happening on the sidelines. And that is the team that was down and only had a score of three came together in a unified way on the sidelines. And it showed up when they got on the field. And the opposite team, when they were on the sideline, they began to point fingers at one another. They began to be distant from one another. They began not respecting one another. And because of what they did on the sideline, it showed up on the field. And there's a reason why the score that was at one point 28 to 3 ends up changing in totality is what happens when a team begins one to either break down or two join together whenever people come together whenever they put behind them their issues and their faults and their shortcomings they can find themselves stronger and whenever a group of people come together and it's all about them and themselves and what they want that team will never ever succeed in fact every sport whether it's basketball football lacrosse or hockey all start the season off with a period called conditioning Conditioning is when players have to come together and work out together and run together and sweat together and there are moments where they want to give up and yet this is the same moment that binds them together because they realize that they actually have a good teammate. They know that their teammate isn't perfect, but they know their teammate is trying. Help me, somebody. They know their teammate doesn't have it all together, but they know their teammate is going to show up for them when they find themselves in a bad situation. Their teammate doesn't have to be the best one on the team. As long as they're showing up for the team, then the team is going to be better. And I don't know about you, St. John. I'll tell you my story. I'm old enough now to tell you that in this life, there's ups and there's downs, but there's nothing 
nothing better than having a good teammate, a teammate who will pray with you, a teammate who will walk with you, a teammate who will support you and not worry about all of your mistakes and bring up things about you from your past 30 years ago. But I'm talking about a teammate who's willing to be there with you and support you and love you and serve you and help you and somebody who's doing it because they love Christ and because they love you. Beloved, in this season, I'm here to tell you, this is what God told me to share with you. God wants you to be a good teammate. Let me say that again. God wants you to be a good teammate. Yes, God wants you to be a good teammate. It doesn't matter your position. It doesn't matter your title. It doesn't matter your money. It doesn't matter where you sit. It doesn't matter how big your hat is. It doesn't matter how expensive your suit is. God is looking for some teammates in the house. And not teammates because of what we did, but teammates because because of what he did for us 2,000 years ago. Is there anybody who can testify I'm a good teammate because 2,000 years ago, Jesus taught us what it meant to be a good teammate. Ephesians, the fourth chapter, is a classic Christian text. If you've never read this chapter, I want to encourage you as soon as you get home, read Ephesians, the fourth chapter, because Paul is admonishing the church at Ephesus how they ought to live and how they ought to be a good Christian. We have to be different from everybody else. I like that word. Let me say it again. We have to be different from everybody else, not because we're better than anybody, because there ain't nobody in here better than anybody else out there on that street. We have to be different because we serve a Christ. We serve a Lord who is extraordinary, who is different. And if we call ourselves serving him, then we too have to be different. What ties us together, beloved, is not, no, not necessarily our skin color, not necessarily where we live or what songs we like. What unites us together as teammates on God's team is Jesus Christ. I like that word, Jesus Christ. There's power in that name, Jesus Christ. At the name of Jesus, every head shall bear bow, every tongue must confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. So what ties us together is Jesus Christ. You might not always agree with me, but what ties us together is Jesus Christ. You might not like how I handle the situation, but what ties us together is Jesus Christ because this is his church. And we're stewards in his church. Paul says, Paul says, you got to treat people right because your life is a witness of the Christ that ties us together. If you go out and act a fool and act crazy, how does that show people that there's a living Savior in the world today? There's a responsibility for all of us who call ourselves Christians. And, and let me just pause and say, if you don't identify as a Christian, then I'm not talking to you. If, if you don't want to be a Christian, it's okay. I'm not talking to you. But I'm talking to the people in here who've been saved by the grace of God, who identify themselves with Jesus Christ. We're all on his team and when you're on his team you got to go by his rules and his rules are telling us that we ought to be humble and gentle and patient bearing with one another in love make every effort to keep the unity of the spirit through the bond of peace there is one body and one spirit just as you have been called to one hope when you were called one lord one faith one baptism one god and one father of all who is over all and through all and in all let me say that again who is over all he who is through all and who is in all let me say that one more time just in case you didn't hear me who is over all who is through all and who is in all is there anybody who can testify he's in me right now because had he not been in me I wouldn't be here right now I should have been dead a long time ago sleeping in my grave I should have lost my mind a long time ago but he's in me He's in me. Beloved, when, we, when we, be, we begin to have problems like the church at Ephesus because the church at Ephesus has an I problem. Not E-Y-E, -E, but the letter I. Because I has been trying to rule that church. I has been trying to direct that church. I think we should do this. I think we ought to do that. I think we ought to let him go. I think we ought to bring this person in. They have an I problem and they have a me problem. 
they have an I problem and they have a me problem. And we begin to have problems when we have an I problem and a me problem, but not a he issue. Because I and me and we are only here because of him. Y'all quiet on me this morning, church. I, I said I and we and me are only here because of him. That's why we're here. And Paul has to correct them by letting them know you are saved by grace. Which means it doesn't make you better than anybody. It doesn't make you better than anybody. Because all of us got some mess in us. All of us got some skeletons in the closet. You ought to be glad don't nobody know about your skeletons. But if somebody knew about the stuff you had in your closet, you sit down right now and start getting on your knees and giving God praise because we all got mess. He wants them to realize you got to follow Christ when you have an issue or you don't understand how you should act. You got to go back to Christ. Help me, Holy Ghost. When you don't know how to come to your brother and sister in love and respect, you got to go back to Christ. Because when you go back to Jesus, Jesus will tell you how you ought to deal with and treat and serve and love one another. I'm so glad when I read the Bible, I, I don't, not, not one time did I see Jesus slap anybody. Y'all quiet on me. Not, not one time. I done read the Bible several times. I ain't seen Jesus cuss nobody out yet. He probably wanted to, but he didn't do it. But what we do find is a living Savior who wants to save the world through grace. That's our good news this morning, church. And we as a church or any church or any person will be in good hands when he and his will are the focus of all things. Beloved, number one, we honor God when we live a life that reflects his son. Your life doesn't belong to you. I hope you didn't just want to let you know that. Because if you call yourself a Christian, that means you represent him, Jesus Christ. And if you want to know how to represent Jesus Christ, you got to pick up your word. You've got to read your Bible. You've got to study your Bible. I see a sister with a Bible in the hand right there. you got to be just like that when it comes to knowing how to live like Christ. And beloved, our lives can be better when we put our lives in Christ's hand and trust that God will do what needs to be done. I know some of us, we're very strategic. We like to plan things in our life. But, but if you lived a little bit, you understand, as the Bible says, man has his own plans. But God's plans trumps them all. We, we have the things. We know what we want to do. We know where we want to go. But we got to realize our hand, our life is in God's hands. And God has the right to direct our lives. And beloved, while God directs our lives, we ought to live like we know Jesus. Paul wants the people in Ephesus to know, here's what I'm trying to tell you in some. Act like Jesus. Try to walk like Jesus. Try to talk like Jesus. Try to serve like Jesus. And if you don't know what else, just go back to Jesus. They might not change, but keep talking like Christ. Keep walking like Christ. Keep serving like Christ. They still might be crazy, but keep acting like Christ. Keep serving like Christ. Keep loving like Christ. Keep walking with Christ. Keep being with Christ because he walks with you and he talks with you and he tells you that we are his own. So keep on talking to him. Um, we got to live a life that reflects his son um, because that's how we grow in Christ. A, a tree, for example, a tree, a tall tree has deep roots. In order for a tree to get taller, its roots have to go deeper. Help me, Holy Ghost. A tree, if it wants to get tall, in order for it to keep growing, several things need to happen. Its roots need to get deeper. And it needs to take in some power 
from the sun. And it needs to be fed through the water. What are you trying to say, Pastor Gordon? Well, in the Bible, water is often a metaphor for the Holy Spirit. And the S-U-N is often a metaphor for the S-O-N. But the S-O-N got more power than the S-U-N. In fact, the S-O-N just this week put the moon in between the earth and the sun because the S-O-N is in charge of the sun, the moon, the earth, and you. And you've got to have your roots real deep because when your roots are deep, and if you keep reading Ephesians 4, Paul tells us the same thing. When your roots are deep, when the wind comes, you'll stand firm. When the challenges come, you'll stand firm because you're deeply rooted in God and deeply rooted in God's word and deeply rooted in your faith. Are there any, any root saints in the house today who can testify? I've been battle tested. I've been worn. I've been beat down. I've been talked about. I've been lied on. I've been singled out, but I've got deep roots. And those deep roots let me keep growing. So while the other little shrubs still jealous, I'm still growing because I got deep roots. I got any deep root saints in the house who can just give God praise right now and say, I got deep roots because I'm rooted in his word. I'm rooted in his love. I'm rooted in his hope. I'm rooted in his joy. I'm rooted. I'm sorry, I said this sermon is gonna be 10 minutes. So I'll give you one more point and I'll take my seat. Beloved, when we reflect Christ, here's the good news. It draws people to Christ. I ain't making this up, church. It's in the Bible. When we reflect Christ with our life, it draws people to Christ. I just want to say it again. When we reflect Christ with our life, not only does it honor God, but it draws people to Christ. Here's the good news. God loves you so much that God wants to use you to draw other people to Christ. So our lives have to match up with the Christ we're talking about. Our walk and our talk have to match up. Sometimes we slip, beloved. Sometimes we make mistakes. Before you leave this church, all of us are going to make a mistake. Before you get to your house, you're probably going to make two or three. But guess what? It's okay. But we still can line our lives up with Christ. In the seventh verse, Paul says, you know all this is true because the grace of God. The grace of God goes before us. The grace of God covers us. The grace of God walks with us. The grace of God spares us. The grace of God is like strong glue. It grips us to God and God's word. The grace of God is powerful, and we wouldn't be here today had it not been for the grace of God. All I got to tell you is look back over your life. It was grace that brought you through. Is that anybody's testimony this morning? It was grace that brought you over. It was grace that made a way. It was grace that dried your tears at night. It was grace that rocked you to sleep at night. It was grace that took you to work on Monday morning when you was ready to quit three months ago. It was grace that helped you to come in the church on Sunday morning and lift your hands up and give God praise. Is there anybody in the house today who can thank God for his grace? Isn't this grace sufficient for you? Isn't this grace powerful for you? If you can give God praise for his grace, you ought to stand on your feet and say, I am a living witness that it was the grace of God. The grace of God, it brought me through. And because of his grace, I walk right. Because of his grace, I talk right. 
because of his grace I serve right because of his grace I live right because of his grace I give right is there anybody in St. John today who can get happy right now and give God some praise give him praise for the grace can I tell you why because 2,000 years ago I said 2,000 years ago grace was with Jesus Christ and early Sunday morning grace got out of the grave with all power in his hands power to heal power to set free power to make a way power to hope power to love power to shout power to praise power to give power to serve power to sing power to preach you got power i got power all of god's children we got power say yes i'm glad i got his power say yes i'm glad i got his grace and i can talk right i can walk right i can dance right i can serve right i can shout right say it and I can do all these things because we're on his team and he's the head coach of his team aren't you glad to be on God's team aren't you glad to be on God's team your team might not work but God's team can handle all things beloved we want to open up the doors of the church at this time if you all can stand and there may be someone here today you've been on your own team for months for years today is the day to get on God's team you can't lose if you're on God's team when you're on God's team you're just victorious there might be someone looking for a church home we'd love to have you at St. John to join this local team of God's team. The doors of the church are open at this time. Jesus 
Let the church say amen. Let's give God another hand clap of praise if you love the Lord. Amen. He's worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy. He can break every chain. Amen. Beloved, it's a beautiful day outside. Enjoy it with your friends and your family. And be reminded that we're on God's team. If you want to know more about God, all you got to do is pick up the word. It'll tell you how to walk right, how to talk right, how to treat people right, how to serve right, and how to love right. Amen. Brother O.B. Gray has food outside again. So if you want some, he'll be outside for you. Amen. Let's prepare for our benediction. If we can all stand, if you're able. And I want you to be praying for that person on your left and on your right. Pray that God will bless them this week. And pray that they would be a blessing to God. In fact, if you want, you can grab the hand if you want to. But I want you to pray for that hand you're holding if you're holding a hand. That you keep that person lifted up in prayer. So let us pray. Almighty God, thank you so much for still being good to us. You've been better to us than we could ever be to our own selves. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for what you have done in worship service today. Thank you for reminding us, God, that all we do should be a reflection of the Christ who died for us, the one who shed his blood for us. And by doing that, we become a part of his team. And we have to act like him if we're going to be on his team. If we've done wrong, Lord, forgive us and help us to be better. Lord, I pray for the hand that I'm holding. I don't know what it's been through. I don't know what it will go through. But I pray, God, that you would touch this hand just as I'm touching it, that you would empower it, that you would nurture it, that you would strengthen it, that you would give it peace and grace and joy. May the hands that I'm holding, may they be hands used to make the world a better place, to show the world how to love, and how to love like Christ did. Keep this hand safe, God, as they drive, as they go to work, as they move, as they take care of their children, as they pick up their grandkids. Keep this hand safe, God, all for you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for all you do. Now unto the one who is able to keep us from falling and present us faultless before God's glorious presence with exceeding great joy to the great God who is the coach and it's his team we are on to that one be all glory dominion honor and praise hence now and forevermore and let us all sing together